Hi. In this video, I'm going to tell you the four things that you need to keep your fingers on the pulse of your sign shop's financials. Stay tuned. What is up, everybody? How you doing? My name is Peter Karunas, and I'm with Shopbox. Today, I am going to talk to you about a very important video, a very important topic to me, and that is actually keeping your fingers on the pulse of your sign shop's financials. I'm going to explain to you the quick four easy steps on how to do that. But before we begin, actually, one of the first things I want to ask you is why is this actually important? Why is it important to have a thorough and complete understanding of your sign shop's financials? Well, that's a real complex question, but to simplify it for you, as business owners, as sign shop business owners, we are faced with making decisions every day. We have to make decisions on employee, on staffing. We have to make decisions on operations. We have to make decisions on marketing. We have to make decisions on actually purchasing items. We have to decide whether our company can actually afford to or not. If you have your fingers on the pulse of your financials, you're actually able to make these decisions without hesitation. You're actually able to make these decisions without worrying about your business's success. Why is it important to have a thorough and complete understanding of your sign shop's financial success? Well, that's a very complex question, a very detailed question, a very impactful question. But to simplify the answers for you, I'm going to basically say this. Having an understanding of your business's pulse will help you make sound buying decisions when it comes to your everyday operational life in your sign shop. So whether or not you can afford to make that hire for your graphic designer to add to your staff, or whether you can afford to make that lucrative piece of equipment purchase, or whether or not you can afford to invest more in your local marketing, these are questions that we ask ourselves every day. And having a complete and thorough understanding of our financials is key to making sound business decisions. So. Here are the four things that you're going to need. Number one, you are going to need a QuickBooks Online account. Now, you can do this with the QuickBooks desktop version, but I find it so much easier to just simply have the online version. So that is my helpful tip. Get an online QuickBooks version subscription. Number two, you're going to need a POS that can map your chart of accounts over to QuickBooks. Now, if you have a Shopbox account, you're in luck. You already have this. But if you don't have a Shopbox account, there are other point of sale softwares out there that do this. Number three, you're going to need access to your business checking account and any other credit card accounts that you have associated for making purchases for your business. And number four, you're going to need time. You're going to need at least 30 minutes a week of free time to really assess and analyze your financial data. All right, so here's how it works. Let's already assume that you've gone through the onboarding steps for having your QuickBooks online account. You've gotten that all set up. You've punched in all of your information. That's great. We're not going to go through those steps. But the steps that are important after you have your, your actual account set up, you're going to have to link your business checking account. Now, QuickBooks actually has a very helpful tool. It has a lot of the banks out there. Uh, so I have, a, I have a feeling that your bank will be listed. So you connect your bank account to your QuickBooks account. Now, what is that also going to do? You're going to here, you're going to actually connect your business checking account. This is where you're, you know, your money comes in and money goes out of your account. You'll also take the time to set up all of your credit card accounts, whether you have a Discover card, American Express, uh, Visa, MasterCard, whatever the have you, it could be your own personal cards, but however you're making your business purchases, if you're even putting them on your personal cards, you need to link these cards as well as your bank account to QuickBooks. And finally, your POS system has to also connect to QuickBooks. Now, this is a little bit of a tedious task because you have to make sure that you map all of the necessary criteria that pushes data from your point of sale system over to QuickBooks. So that's going to be your sales tax, your payment methods, your customer information, uh, the customer's contact information. You're basically, whatever you put information you put in your software for a quote, an estimate, or even an order is going to have to actually duplicate and get pushed over to the right chart of accounts that are going to actually be connected to your P&L statement. Now all the work is done. And now 
what actually can it do? Well, this is where that 30 minutes of time comes in because if you put in 30 minutes a week into this process, QuickBooks is ultimately going to memorize what category these invoices and also all of the expenses are going to go into. So for example, if you're going to the gas station a lot, spending $20, $30 a week, it recognizes the payee and it'll automatically assign that to you know, the right criteria in your P&L statement, whether that it could be uh, automotive gas expenses, or maybe you go to the 7-Eleven and you, you know, you buy yourself a morning coffee. It'll know to put that in the corresponding right category on your P&L statement. All right, so this is how this works. Your POS system sends in all of the sales. It, it, it pushes all the sales data into your P&L state. And now that you have your bank account and all of your corresponding credit cards linked to QuickBooks as well, it's taking that information and it's putting it in all the expenses. So now basically what you have here is a automated and very active and very current P&L statement for your business, up to the day even. But you want to spend 30 minutes a week assigning all of the expenses to the proper categories. And then eventually, as weeks go on, you're not going to need to spend that much time doing it because QuickBooks will memorize the transactions and you'll only have to do maybe a handful. And I would also recommend doing this weekly, not bi-weekly or monthly, because if you wait to the end of the month, you're going to have hundreds and hundreds of transactions depending on the volume of your purchasing history in your business. If you have 100, 200, 300 expenses that you have to make each month, well, well, that's a lot to categorize. But if you do it weekly and you do it uh, for about 30 minutes a week, it'll actually end up saving you time, making you a little bit more productive throughout the week because eventually, as you get to week three, four, or five, QuickBooks is going to memorize, like I said, memorize those transactions and you won't have to spend 30 minutes a week each time. So why is this information really helpful? Well, first and foremost, the second that you have an accurate and current p &L statement inside of QuickBooks, it tells you all sorts of different types of insights for your business. As a sign shop owner, I would want to see every week our current cash flow, our current operating cash flow. Are we positive? Are we negative? Where the money is coming in, when we should actually see the money coming in. And it gives me a financial health, if you will, of my company. It also tells me a lot of other things. For example, it'll tell me what our cost of goods percentages is for the week, for the month, for the quarter, for, you know, for the year so far. And it keeps me on track for maintaining those particular percentages that I need to maintain on our P&L statement. You know, I try and look at something under 28% for our cost of goods sold. I'd like to be as uh, close to under 28% uh, as I possibly can when it comes to our cost of goods category. It's also going to tell you your current overhead percentage. You know, you're gonna have those fixed expenses that you need to know about, like your rent, your electric, your utilities, um, your advertising costs, whatever the case may be, those are going to be something that you want to make sure are also operating at a consistent percentage base. And finally, it'll also tell you what your current payroll situation looks like as well. I mean, you might be overstaffed. You might be understaffed. If you have a 10% payroll percentage towards your gross sales, I tend to think that you're a little understaffed there. But if you're operating over 30, 35, 40% in payroll, you might be overstaffed or paying some of your staff a little bit more than you're actually getting in uh, sales-wise. So that might be a decision that you have to make there to balance out your percentages so that you can show the most profit at the end of the year. All right, guys, well, that's it for me. I hope that this video helps you make sound business decisions for your sign shops because it's very important to keep an eye on your business's financial health. If you like this video, please press like and subscribe so you can catch all of these amazing videos to help you and your sign shop prosper. I'm Peter Karunas with Shopbox, and like always, everybody, stay positive out there.